I've decided I'm going to make another new account. Yeah, I know I just made one in the last video, but I'm kind of bored of that one already to be honest with you. And I have a better idea. New Bounty Hunter just came out, which I've really wanted to test out, but I can't do this unless I have the perfect account for it and one that I really enjoy playing. For those of you who didn't know my videos years and years ago when I had just a couple thousand subscribers, I made solely PKing videos and mainly these videos were on obby maulers or obby tanks. One of the obby tanks I enjoyed the most was back in 2014, I made a video called Stouting PK Video 1 where I had a 45 defense, 16 attack, obby zerker tank that I used to PK with and I was hitting 50s even with an obby maul back then. Nowadays we have Dragon Warhammers, Stadius Warhammers, which also don't require attack, but hit even more than the Obby Maul. As well, now I know how to get a Berserker Helm without needing 16 attack. I can do that with one attack because once again I made a bunch of accounts back when I discovered how to not get the XP reward from Fermanic Trials, because Fermanic Trials would naturally get you from 1 to 16 attack. So I used one of my spare accounts and decided, hey, let's make a Zerker Obby, or I should call it a Zerker Warhammer now and let's see how well we can make this account maybe prod it out with some low hp and possibly even an inferno cape as well as a jad pet with a transmogged jad pet taking later on the six jad challenge so what does this have to do with kicking for a jad pet well obby maulers naturally at 99 strength can only get up to 67 range and magic so if i want to get a jad pet there's no way i can just range fight caves over and over again because after just about 5 to 10 attempts from 50 to 67 range, I would go over my range cap and my one attack would therefore no longer be so special. I needed to find a way to consistently kill Jad and complete the fight caves over and over again without just getting extremely lucky in order to possibly achieve that Jad pet and then still have enough range left over to eventually someday possibly go for the Inferno Cape and 6 Jad challenge to transmog that Jad pet. But before we get into how I decided to go about kicking fight caves countless times and building this account entirely from scratch, I wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor for today's video, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. You can play more than 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships in dynamic combined arms PvP battles. Every vehicle is incredibly detailed and modeled down to their individual components. I personally enjoy War Thunder because it has some of the most dynamic and detailed vehicle damage models in gaming. I also love the graphics, so this makes it a very tactical and realistic experience. Speaking of realistic, the collection of vehicles in War Thunder spans over 100 years of developments from the 1920s to the present day. If you're a new player or haven't played in at least 6 months, you can claim a large bonus pack by using my link in the description below. This pack includes multiple premium vehicles, premium account, an exclusive 3D decorator for your vehicles, and much more. So what are you waiting for? Play War Thunder now for free across all platforms, PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, using my link in the description or my pinned comment below. So yes, there was a way to make this very unique PKing account as well as trophy account because of course, I needed it both ways. So that's going to be through using my feet to take on the fight caves over and over again. And with one attack being an obby mauler or d warhammer or whatever you want to call it i'm not going to be having a lot of accuracy unless i use my manips of course yes we finally found it fossey grim's secret as to how he was hitting threes with all one stats and why he was in ranged gear we found julage after a month or two of on and off searching for this julage once again it fit the requirements of not having any requirements and that was the recruitment drive quest and myself and RNG narrowed it down to this and we were able to test and basically find the entire bug and how to use it. And let's just say if not on a defense pier or on a very niche account like this, it can be used on some very high powered accounts. It bases your attack speed off of the weapon that gets deleted. So if I had a knife, I could be kicking at a three tick attack speed and be rolling 60s off my high dragon javelin range strength bonus and high range accuracy. This could also be brought into PvP scenarios, which I did not do and neither did RNG. This could be really bad and it is likely why Fossey Grimm changed his name twice and ran away from us. Not because of his Berserker Helm and his Archer Helm, but because of the fact that this bug is super overpowered, it could be used for gambling in PvP scenarios or just being a menace in BH, kicking constant 60s at an MSB speed. But we're not going to be doing any of that today, me or RNG, because we don't want to get chain banned. Instead, we're going to be using it for extremely niche examples, such as me going for fight caves attempts today, 
while only hitting 20s being around 50 range on this account, as once again I cannot get my range that high. Although I did do some testing on a higher range account, and yes, it can hit very high very fast as you see here. Although it's not necessarily kicking, and I'll get into why later on that it's throwing phantom darts and knives. RNG had messaged me and he had saw my recent video and said, you know, what is Jewelage? And he was going through the old 10HP Discord, which he is a part of, and found something very suspicious. Some of the members were doing the old cannon smuggle to take on Recruitment Drive, which can be done by putting a gravestone inside the Recruitment Drive room where you actually have to kill the NPC with no weapons on. And then you could go ahead and die remotely, send a cannon into your gravestone, put up the cannon inside that recruitment drive room, and finish that room without any hit points experience. It's the 10 HP method of completing recruitment drive to this very day. But one person decided to put on a weapon and go into the next room. Whenever they picked up the fox and grain off the floor being objects, they went over the top of the weapons they were wielding and totally deleted them but kept the wielded items on inside the combat attack tab. I kind of talked about how we were looking for a way to remove items but keep the attack style on in the video addressing Fossey Grimm, which I'll link in the description below. As well, RNG once again really helped with this because he is in the 10HP community and came to me with this information and we looked into it a lot further. He does some really cool unique things on his account too, like 10HP majoring a 2 with no XP, which is incredible, and I'll put that video as well as his channel link in the description below. But anyways, we both saw this old chat and we realized this was probably it. It keeps your weapon but deletes it at the same time and you can't wield any items, meaning you would naturally be kicking. And well, we found out through teleporting it deleted the effect entirely and deleted the wielded item that you magically kind of have on and don't. But if you leave just straight through the exit, then you're able to keep the attack style and you're able to roll melee XP based off of your ranged strength and your ranged attack. So if I was to make the Zerker and get 50 range, I could hit around 19 or 20 and roll an attack every three ticks, rolling off my range accuracy rather than my one attack accuracy, which is extremely low. And therefore I could maybe do fight caves in a decent amount of time without wasting my range XP every time when going for that Jad pet. This would make the Jad pet feasible on an obby mauler like this without just relying solely on luck. And I could easily go over 200 KC more than twice the rate and still keep my range as low as I want it. Although I would want a 50 range base because the higher range strength and the higher ranged accuracy I do have, the quicker the fight caves are going to happen. I don't want to go up to 60 or 67 range on this account because I do want to save some XP for some Inferno attempts. I'm going to be making accounts on the side to practice 60 range Inferno attempts as well. So I'm going to make sure I have that down before I use my four or five attempts in Inferno completely up and fail this account entirely even after it has the jad pet. Whenever I use this kick effect, I have to be in melee zone, so doing a one per fire cape with only hitting 19s and 20s in melee zone really isn't going to be optimal, and I do want to get this account prayer anyways for the transmog of the jad pet and for an inferno kit possibly. So that's the plan, that's the goal. Sit around 50 range, maybe a little bit more as long as it's under 60. See how fast I can do the fight caves by using this jewelage manip and kicking through fight caves and compare that to the time it takes for a 50 range fight caves attempt. I'm going to go ahead and do all the range quests I can before I get 50 range just so those are out of the way because like I said I cannot waste range XP at any moment in time past around 50 to 60 range and I might as well get those quests out of the way. As well I want to complete as many defense quests as possible that I can before I get 45 defense or at least 40 defense to optimize my range gear as I will be rolling off range accuracy and I will be wanting to use like a blue dehyde top. I don't need to use an archer's helm yet, the Robin Hood is actually better. But I'm going to be preparing this account with a range quest, defense quest, but not yet prayer quest because I don't want more Tanya tasks from Vanica when training the 55 Slayer for a Slayer staff. That's because it just makes it a lot easier to cannon more tasks. Plus, Mortania tasks are just awful in general, and I want to avoid those at all costs. So for now, I'm going to train my prayer manually to 43, not do any prayer quests, and I do plan on eventually getting 52 prayer on this account, and then between 43 and 52 prayer, when I'm ready after I have 55 Slayer, I'm going to go ahead and do that quest line that'll get a lot of prayer up and do all the prayer quests I possibly can on this account, 
That's because Smite is becoming super optimal, I've heard, in builds for Obby Maulers in this combat bracket, as people are smiting Dragon Warhammers and Stadius Hammers all the time. So I do want Smite in the long run, and not just overheads, because this is going to be a PKing account. I do plan on returning to do at least one video of PKing, and just PKing in my free time to have some fun in BH. I do want 65 magic for Lunar Diplomacy, as well as a Kingdom Divided, and the spell here, which is kind of like a double smite, which makes it even easier to smite a Dragon Warhammer, Stadius Warhammer, all of that, and is pretty much the only spell useful on an Obby Mauler build. I know what you might be thinking, why go through all this trouble just for a Jad pet and a cosmetic if this is a PKing account? Well, because I want it to be both a PKing account and an account I can be proud of that's super unique. As well, you might be thinking, why get 45 defense and a Berserker Helm? Why not just stay one defense and do this? Well, because I miss the account and I like how it looks and because I just want to, that's why. And I want to basically do this all with one attack and prod low HP. So eventually I'm probably gonna Soul Wars as my strength up and have a very low combat level with some awesome Berserker Pure gear. So I'll get into the step-by-step -step process later down in this video when I actually use it on how the jewelage was obtained and go through the entire thing and show you some examples of it being actually used when we get down to that step of this account. But for now, I'm going to focus on questing, building this account. And once again, this account already has Fermanic Trials done. I did complete that a long time ago with the other accounts whenever I decided to go and take on Fermanic Trials without quest reward XP. It's just a spare level three that I did this quest on. So I'm gonna take this account and make it into something even more unique. Be in that Berserker Pier Obsidian with hopefully a Jad Transmog pet and an Infernal Cape down the line. So first of all, I wanted to do all the range quests that I possibly could and I needed to get my stats up for a lot of these quests to begin with. I decided to go ahead and start Recipe for Disaster because I do need to do the Chompy Bird Hunting quest for some ranged XP, and as well, I do need to do the Jubbly portion of this quest by helping scratch a Wagi, which also rewards me more ranged XP. I also needed 30 plus 5 agility for Horror from the Deep. That's because Horror from the Deep gives me strength and rage XP. Once again, another range quest I need to get done, plus the books from this quest are amazing for an obby account. So optimally, the Bandos book and the Unholy book are super handy for this account, as well as the Armadil book, as I'll be using once again Jewelage and need as much range bonus as possible for this account, and the Armadil book is going to be the best in slot for my shield. So for that 30 agility requirement, I went ahead and started Tourist Trap. I also used the Dialogue Manip once again in this quest by talking to the guard the same time I had an alt at that step of the quest. This allowed me to bypass having to kill the guard with my such low stats. Finishing Tourist Trap gave me a lot of starting agility XP, and I finished off the 30 agility by summer pieing at the Verot course. From here, I went to go use some of my HP XP, which I don't mind getting some range in HP XP manually because I will be needing to get it through certain tasks. I used some of this on Witch's House because I just want the quest points from that quest, and some of my HP is going to come from this quest, and it's going to give me a head start in going into these other quest boss fights, such as Horror from the Deep. Eventually, after literally a half hour of poison niving the witch's house and PCs, I did get that quest done. Did get the HP reward from that, so a nice starting base of HP. I don't plan on ever getting over 70 HP on this account, but we're not even close to that, so I'm not worried about it. After completing the bar crawl and doing all of those prereqs, it was finally time for the actual whore from the deep quest for the ranged XP. I once again tried to poison knife the first boss and it just wasn't that successful, so we switched over to magic, killed him, and then slowly took on the last boss with magic and recoils, which was fairly easy but just took some time. I next needed 41 thieving in order to take on Temple of Ikov, which is yet another ranged XP rewarding quest. Then I would have to focus my efforts on the Lost Tribe quest and Death to Dorgashin, as Lost Tribe is required for that quest, and this Death to Dorgashin quest grants a lot of ranged XP. Next I went ahead and got some more mining XP by completing the Dig Site quest, and then finally I decided to get 43 prayer, yes unquested, as I'll eventually be getting 52, don't worry. I wanted this prayer to go ahead and focus my efforts towards Dragon Slayer early on, which I could do with protection prayers fairly easy. And once again, just like in the last video, we fought Elvarg and won. And I got to pull his head off of his body. This was for defense XP as I want to quest as much of that as possible as well. 
before getting 45 defense, although I won't have access to all of the defense quests on this type of account. I next took on the Golem as well as Demon Slayer in order to do Shadow of the Storm which is required for Myth Gloves and the Recipe for Disaster quest line of Evil Dave's portion, as well I took an XP reward here and then could focus more on defense XP quests as I would start to get my smithing up for Between a Rock quest as well as my rune crafting to level 35 by completing the Temple of the Eye quest and Rune Mysteries quest, along with the Dark Wizard mini quest, and finally through just crafting extra body tiaras for the last two levels by teleporting to the monastery with a combat bracelet and banking at Castle Wars. Dig Site Doric's quest and the Lost Tribe quest got us some early mining levels, a boost all the way up to about 33 mining, so I was able to take this and go to 41 mining which was required for the Between a Rock quest at the 3 spot iron near Ardy. I then completed the fishing contest as well as the dwarf portion of RFD, and then moved on to another dwarven quest being between the rock, and took on the boss inside the gold mining room, which took me a couple of tries because it actually despawned the first time, but I came back with a cannon and this made it much easier. So between a rock gave us some defense XP, next I would be taking on what lies below which gives us even more defense XP, and that's what that 35 rune crafting was for. I was able to do this quest pretty easily, and the final boss, being King Rald, was a piece of cake. I went ahead and did the feud quest for the last few thieving levels required for 41 thieving for Temple of Ikov, but I would not actually need the range requirement for this quest once again as you've seen in previous episodes. So even though I was under 40 range, I could just simply use knives with ice arrows equipped to avoid that use short bow requirement, as you don't actually need to shoot ice arrows, you just need them equipped, and I was therefore able to do this with 20 range, some knives, and protect mage pretty easily, and all in one inventory, with only one chest search for a singular ice arrow. So I got some more ranged XP from the Temple of Ikov quest, and then went on my way to get the Zogar Flesh Eater requirements, being Chompy Bird Hunting which itself requires 20 range, gives more ranged XP, and as well Zogar Flesh Eaters requires Jungle Potion, as well as Druidic Ritual which I completed along the way. For Zogar Flesh Eaters there's a safe spot on this boss which you still get ranged at but you do not get meleeed, and I have Protect and a Composite Bow, so this was super simple. After this I one tick cooked some karams inside the rogue's den area for a fast cooking requirement being 41 to cook a jubbly and go ahead and take on scratch a wagi's portion of recipe for disaster which would get me up to myth gloves as well would give me the very last portion of ranged xp I could access from any quest therefore our entire range to this point would be quested. Next I decided to use forestry once again to get my wood cutting up as fast as possible at willows and managed to get 55 wood cutting as there was one more defense quest this account and only this account could do. And that was Olaf's quest. Yes, because I had Fermanic Trials done in this account, I could do Olaf's quest with just one attack and get some more defense XP, making sure almost all of my defense XP was quested. To be honest, for some reason, this time around, this quest was a pain in the ass as I fell countless times and had to run back. I think it's because of my weight or my agility. I don't know, but I've never had this quest take this long and I spent well over two hours trying to get to the final boss room, where I finally did kill Skeletor. But not quite yet. Yeah, I thought I found a workaround for this with interface walking, but unfortunately, um, no. It doesn't work. God, is it happening? It happened. I actually got through the bridge. That is incredible. It only took two hours. Thank you. Success. This put me at 42 defense, and this is pretty much the highest I'm going to be getting until I do Nature Spirit, but once again, that requires Priests in Peril, and I'm not going to be doing that quite yet. So eventually, I will get Addy Gloves as well as Nature Spirit done, but for now I'm going to sit at 42 defense, and that's all I really need anyways for a dehyde top and more range bonus, as well as rune armor and all kinds of other things I can wield, and 45 defense will be put on the back burner for now. 
I next went on to range to cannon it to 50 through Slayer and utilize my range for something important on this account, which once again is Slayer, which eventually I will want 55 for the Slayer staff. I only got up to 37 after all of these tasks and cannoning to 50 range. But now we had a huge start to the account. We had all these quests done, all this range XP quested and defense XP quested, and we were finally almost ready for the fight cave kicking runs. But I wanted a little bit more ranged accuracy for my jewelage, therefore I wanted to imbue my archer's ring. And I did this through PvP arena worlds which were honestly bugged and scuffed. Half the time whenever you would not join through the stairs you would just get kicked out before you could even accept the match and so every one of my opponents were getting kicked out and I would go up the stairs with no matches. Eventually though after about a half hour and in a very populated time I got this done and could then imbue my archer's ring and finally have the perfect range bonus to take on fight caves with range bonus but technically with my feet instead of with a range weapon. So how the whole jewelage bug thing worked was I would need to set it up this specific way. I never wanted to complete recruitment drive because if this quest was completed I can no longer get back in this area. So I would always make sure I never do more than 5 rooms as that would complete the quest. Anyways, I would try and get the combat room as quick as possible. The quickest you could get it is on the second room, but I could get it as even the third or fourth or fifth and then re-log if I didn't get it at all and try again. Eventually I would get the combat room, pick up more than three items such as these steel items here on the table, die with them so I create a gravestone, then remotely implant items into this gravestone by dying to nettles or anywhere else in the game as wherever you die the second time while your gravestone is still up you will remotely place other items into that gravestone. So I was able to then put my range gear as well as my dragon javelin which I would use for massive range strength bonus remotely into this grave. By the way you can wield any kind of javelin and any kind of arrow at any level of range whereas you can't wield bolts at any range level. I don't know it's weird but they're not coded the same way and that's how I'm getting a massive amount of range strength bonus because even though knives can't technically fire javelins that's what the game thinks I'm doing. So I want to die with all this range gear and pick it back up once back inside of the room. Whenever I come back to the recruitment drive rooms, I want to once again get the combat room as soon as possible. That's because now I need to get the combat room and then after that I need to get the fox and grain room soon after before completing the five rooms. So I'll start over the recruitment drive quest many times trying to get the combat room where my gravestone is and then get those items out of my gravestone once I'm in there, complete that room, then hope within the next two or three rooms that I get the fox and grain room, which this could go south and I have to repeat the whole process back over again. So sometimes setting this up could even take as long as an hour. Now get this, once you finally get the fox and grain room, once you smuggle these items back, me and RNG found you cannot teleport anywhere, not even out of the recruitment drive area, or it is a registered leave, and it will remember that you've changed your weapon and therefore reset the jewelage bug. So we need to make sure we leave through the portal here, and then, as you can see, it shows that I am currently wielding knives, even though I've deleted those earlier with the fox, and therefore I'm now on my previous style, which was strength unarmed, which is now giving me strength XP when I'm truly using ranged bonus. And once again, it looks like I'm throwing a fake knife here, but I really don't have any. I found out by switching the knife attack style, this does switch the animation to a kick. And that's exactly how Fossey Grimm made it look like he was kicking sand crabs while hitting threes back in the day. But now the manip was mine and I could use it for the most ridiculous, stupid idea yet. Going for a jad pet and going in the fight caves with it. Now I would have to take a ship all the way to Karamja and I found out the normal Karamja boat kills the jewelage bug. So I would have to take the charter ship to Brimhaven which for some reason didn't kill the jewelage. From there I would run all the way down to the volcano, prepare myself with some prayer pots, some staminas, purple sweets, all of the good stuff and then hopefully somewhat AFK this fire cape because I thought it would be a breeze. Unfortunately it was not a breeze whatsoever. I could only max like a 19 or a 21 potted with 50 range and this cape still took over 2 hours even at a 3 tick attack speed with 160 range strength bonus and massive range bonuses. I thought it would be a lot quicker than this, I thought it would be more AFK, I thought I could train my other accounts on the side, but this took a lot of focus and a lot of time.
I would have to make sure on the range and mage NPC that I flinched it between its projectile attacks so I never got meleeed by these two NPCs. Now I was still pretty low HP here so the mage could just one shot me at any time and I had to pay a lot of attention, eventually running out of prayer points and even having to prayer flick in some moments to conserve my prayer potions. So no, this was not AFK whatsoever. And the worst part was, yeah, it took almost two hours for my first attempt at the fight caves. I decided to see, well, how long does it take to just do another attempt with normal range gear and compare the two. I still have a lot of leeway between 50 and 60 range, so I might as well use some of it for a fight cave attempt and maybe get some combat achievement tasks done as well on the way. So ranging the cape proactively is a little bit more AFK and less stressful than meleeing it with the jewelage in fact. Although I don't save XP which is the main problem and it's around the same exact time. But I'm going to have to go back to jewelage and see what I can do here. Maybe I can even get the combat achievement which is entirely meleeing the fight caves pretty easily with this because if I did it truly with one attack and a melee weapon this would be like a 40 hour cave versus the now 2 hour cave. So another over two hour cape of constant prey flicking, constant moving back and forth. I just, I just don't think this is worth it for a Jad pet. So yeah, uh, I quit this account. Never mind. Screw this idea. It's awful. There's no way in hell I'm going to be kicking through fight caves 100 to 200 times in hopes that RNG just favors me for the day. I would if it was more AFK, but this just isn't worth it. And the main point of this video is I wanted to showcase that Jewelage was found, and it's pretty cool. You know, ranging melee? Who would have thought? Just kidding though, I'm not quitting this account. I will be going to Soul Wars and keeping my HP low and getting some strength up, eventually doing Inferno attempts and hopefully be Kane and BH so I can have some personal fun for myself. If not, also make a video on it, I don't know yet. I once again wanted to give a shout out to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video and making it possible. You can once again play War Thunder for free now on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox by using my link in the pinned comment or video description below. And lastly, I'm sorry I could not get the Jad Pet in the end of this video. I know I didn't get lucky in my three whole KC, but maybe another day and we're still going to go for some cool prodded stats along with an infernal cape on this account and some practice runs on others. I'll catch you next time with some cool unique one-off videos as well eventually we'll get to more defense peer episodes but those are far and few between and they're really long to gather clips for so I apologize for that. Thank you all, subscribe if you enjoyed the content and I'll see you next time.